Assalamu alaikum everyone. Okay. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Juma Mubarak. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiru wa na'uzu billah min shuri anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudillala wa man yuddil falahadiyala. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa allahu wa adhu la shirika la anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanatuku allaha haqqa tukatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal nas attaku rabukum alazi khalakakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaka minha zawjaha. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمْ رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ مَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا My dear brothers and sisters all thanks and praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek his help and forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. And whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Alhamdulillah, my brothers and sisters. Once again, we have an opportunity to reflect on the names of Allah. As we approach this month of Ramadan, reconnecting ourselves with our creator should be top of mind for us. Why top of mind? There is no guarantee in life and off life. So in one moment, we could be anticipating the month of Ramadan as if we're guaranteed life until that month and throughout that month. And all this can change just like that within a moment's notice. If our time in this world comes to an end beforehand, you know, that's it. We don't know when that time will arrive. But when it does arrive, it won't be a second sooner or a second later than when it has been decreed. So to have this privilege to be here today is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of us. And this life is a struggle, a temporary abode for all of us. It is not the end of life. It is actually the beginning of life. It is the journey from here to the hereafter, inshallah. And this life we're living today is the start of that journey. And how we choose to live this life will help us not just in this life here in this world, but also on the day of judgment. Uh, in the Quran, there are many names which refer to the day of judgment. Regardless of which name we choose to use, it is a day we should choose to remember because it is a day when Allah will separate us from one another. And every action we did in this life will be accounted for. With that, let's talk about the two names that I'd like to cover today. And these names are paired together um, in, in any number of, of uh, lists that you look at from different scholars. Al-Ghazali is the list that I've been using this whole time. So Al-Ghazali pairs these names together as well. So these two names that I want to talk about today are Al-Awwal, and al-akhir. The meaning of al-awwal is the first and the meaning of al-akhir is the last. These two names of Allah should not be interpreted to mean that Allah has a beginning and an end. Rather, we should think of these names to mean that Allah has, Allah was the first before anything existed. And when everything else comes to an end, Allah will be the last to remain in continued existence. And because Allah is Al-Awwal, the first, everything in the universe glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Surah Al-Hadid, uh, we know this because in verse 1, we are told, Whatever is in the heavens and earth glorifies Allah. That is to say, every creation in the universe sings the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the entire existence of the universe is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything in it that we know about and everything else in it that we have no clue about belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this same chapter in Surah Al-Hadid, we're also told, 
To him belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. Now, this specific verse appears twice in the beginning of two of the verses in this surah. To me, it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing this point for us that the entire universe and everything inside of it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes it is difficult to fathom the magnificence of Allah. Maybe not sometimes, maybe most of the time, if not all of the time. And it's overwhelming for us, overwhelming to contemplate how Allah can keep track of everything. Even if we gave it an earnest effort, we will run out of ideas quickly. Let's, let's try. Let's take the simplest of example to think about how magnificent Allah is. Let's take someone with tremendous power and influence, such as a king or a queen. Someone in that position has tremendous influence over others. They can change their lives. Through our own experience, we know that this person, the king or queen, does not have complete awareness of everything that goes on in their charge, in their entire kingdom. They have very little clue. So a king or queen will have many ministers whose job is to aggregate information from around the kingdom and summarize it for the king or queen. That's it. Just a summary. Little will be known, if anything, about each individual person who is under their charge, unless there is an exceptional situation. And if you were to have, if you were to have a conversation with this king or queen and ask them about a single individual in their kingdom, unless that person knows them well, the king or queen will have no words to say about them. Why? Because they don't have the depth of knowledge about every person in their realm. That is not the same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're talking about everything that goes on in the universe here on earth and in the heavens, time and space from anything that, anything that Allah has created, Allah knows about from here until the end of days. So how can someone like that know about everything everywhere? And Allah answers this question for us also in Surah Hadid. And he has perfect knowledge of all things. Perfect knowledge should tell us that there is no deficiency whatsoever. That is Allah. Allah knows about everything that goes on in the universe down to the smallest of details. Nothing is hidden. Nothing escapes his awareness. How can this be? How is it possible that Allah has this mastery, this perfection over everything? And then again, in Surah Al-Hadid, Allah answers this question for us. And he is with you wherever you are. For Allah is all seeing of what you do. Allah is Al-Awwal, the first. Allah is aware of everything because every creation exists because of Allah. Everything that came after Allah was created by Allah. For a moment, think about how you start your day every morning. Okay? What is the first thought that comes to your mind? What are the first words that you utter when you wake up in the morning? The first thought that you think of regularly should tell you what is important to you. The first words you utter in the morning should tell you where your tongue is being led by your mind. If the first thing you think about are your worldly affairs, then that is what you deem important, at least instinctively. There's an authentic hadith narrated by Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. And he said, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Allah is the most high. I am as my slave thinks of me, and I am with him when he remembers me. If he remembers me to himself, I remember him to myself. And if he remembers me in a gathering, I remember him in a gathering better than that. If he seeks to draw near to me by a handspan, I draw near to him by a four arms length. And if he comes to me by a four arms length, I draw near to him by an arms length. And if he comes to me quickly, comes to me walking, I come to him quickly. Um, end quote. That's the, the, just the um, translation of that hadith. Um, so just like when you start your day, think about how you end your day right before you go to bed, right before you close your eyes. What do you think about then? Do you think about the next day? Do you think about what happened during the day? Or do you go to sleep with gratitude? The best example for all of us, not just Muslims, but also for non-Muslims, we are told is the life of the Prophet, the seat of the Prophet Wasallam. We know from the collection of the Ahadith, and these are the sayings of the Prophet Wasallam that there was... Uh, a dua for almost everything the Prophet Sallallahu did. Whenever the Prophet Sallallahu used to go to bed, he used to recite the following dua. Bismik Allahumma amut wa ahya. 
Bismik, Allahumma, Amut, wa Ahya. With your name, O Allah, I die and return to life. And when the Prophet ﷺ woke up in the morning, he would recite, Alhamdulillah illazi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nashur. Starting with Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah. So immediately when he wakes up, the first words that are coming out of his mouth is that of gratitude. Alhamdulillah illazi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nashur. All praise belongs to Allah who has restored us back to life after causing us to die and to him shall we return. You know, we can spend an entire lifetime studying the Quran or the Sunnah and we will never be able to learn anything. But we can always start now if we have not yet started. So close to the month of Ramadan, what a good way to have that intention to start um, with just learning a little bit more than we did yesterday. And reflecting on the two names today, Al-Awwal and Al-Akhir, we should understand that for us, there is a beginning and there is an end to this worldly life. We exist in this world for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we know this? We know this from the Quran where Allah tells us in Surah Dariyat, verse 56, wal jinna wal insa illa li I did not create jinn and humans except to worship me. In between the beginning and end, there is a space of time. How we choose to fill this space of time will be the measure of how well we do on the Day of Judgment. One way to fill this space of time is to reflect on the attributes of Allah. Doing so with the intention of learning and falling in love with Allah, just like we would do so for our loved ones. You know, we give our attention to our children, to our parents, to our grandparents, to our spouses, and all that attention helps grow that affection for us in the hearts. And the same should be happening for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The thing that occupies our mind is the thing that occupies our heart. Um, Sheikh Ibn Atala in his book, uh, The Book of Wisdoms, uh, writes that whoever worships him, meaning Allah, for something he hopes from him, meaning Allah, or in order to stave off the arrival of chastisement, has not concerned himself with the real nature of his attributes. What Sheikh uh, Ibn Atala is talking about here is, is telling us a purpose of our worship. So if our purpose is the acquisition of salvation and paradise from uh, salvation from hell and paradise, then, you know, Allah willing, inshallah, we will attain those goals. So if that's all we want, then yes, inshallah, we will attain them. However, if the extent of our interaction with Allah is transactional, meaning that's all we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the only reason we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are trapped in our egos. And we will continue to remain trapped in those egos until such time we discharge Allah's rights over us. So recalling from Surah Dariya that Allah has created jinn and mankind to worship him. So to have excellence in our worship is to worship Allah for his greatness and glory, not solely for the desire uh, of paradise or salvation from hell. So entry into paradise or salvation from the hellfire should be a result of our actions and the sincerity of our worship. Not because that is what we want, that is what we're seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is why we worship. Okay, so it's the result. So to submit our will to Allah is to worship Allah, truly worship Allah, whether he favors us or not. And we know also from Surah Shura, uh, verse 13, Allah who yajtabi ilayhi man yasha wa yahdi ilayhi man yunib. Allah chooses for himself whoever he wills and guides to himself whoever turns to him. This verse from in Surah Shura should give us all hope that Allah will guide us on the righteous path if we turn to him. When we turn to Allah, seeking his pleasure, we are training our hearts to grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our understanding of the Quran so that we may begin to and continue to live our lives under the guidance of Allah. And may Allah increase us in knowledge and give us wisdom, that is to give us the ability to apply this knowledge when we need it the most. My dear brothers and sisters, you know, as, we, as we reflect on the Quran and Sunnah, you know, we should try to commit to memory as many prayers or du'as as we can. There is no restriction that I'm aware about on the language that we, we can use to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows every language, every 
every thought that comes to our mind, every action we take. So it helps us nonetheless to learn Arabic if we commit to memory these du'as in Arabic. And there's plenty of du'as. You know, when we start the salah, we're starting with a du'a. Um, we're, we're saying all kinds of du'as that we pick up over time. Um, however, if we're new to Islam, uh, we don't have any du'as we know in Arabic. Um, you know, I'd like to leave you with one du'a uh, as I try and conclude this khutbah. Uh, and this is a beautiful du'a, at least for me, it's, it has deep meaning. It's, it's been a du'a that I've been um, teaching my kids as well. And I think it's a du'a that many scholars recite. I've at least heard several scholars recite this du'a. And this is a du'a, um, inshallah khair, you know, hopefully you'll, uh, if, you, if you can't memorize it right now, that you can rewind back this khutbah afterwards and maybe Google it, if that's easier for you. But the du'a I'd like to leave with you is, Allahumma habib ilayna al-imana wa zayyinhu fi qulubina. So there are three parts to this khutbah. So I'm going to, I'm going to translate this khutbah first and then, and then break it down for you. So the translation of this, of this dua is, O oh Allah, make our faith beloved to us and beautify it in our hearts and make us hate disbelief, wickedness, and disobedience and make us from amongst those who are rightly guided. Like I said, there are three parts of this du'a. The first part is asking Allah to make our faith or iman beloved to us and to make it beautiful in our hearts. Allahumma habib ilayna al-imana wa zayyinhu fi qulubina. Qalb is the heart, the spiritual heart. And when we see something beautiful, we yearn for it. Our eyes want to gravitate. Ourselves want to gravitate to things that are beautiful. And we ask Allah to make us yearn for Allah and make our iman beautiful in our hearts so that we yearn more for it. The second part of this dua is asking Allah to make us hate disbelief, immorality or wickedness and disobedience. Okay? So when we dislike something, it is in our nature to not want to engage with it in any form. And in this dua, we're asking Allah to make us hate anything that will cause, um, cause the beauty of our imam, iman um, to just be tarnished, not, not even the slightest bit. We're asking Allah to build that hate into us so that we can protect the beauty of our iman within ourselves so that we don't gravitate towards wickedness or disobedience. And the third part of this du'a, uh, we ask Allah to make us from among those who are righteous, meaning those who are rightly guided by Allah. Rashid is somebody who's guided, rightly guided uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah Accept all of our du'as and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our hearts towards him. May we all find the strength to stay firm on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah forgive all our shortcomings. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina kurata yuni wa jalla lamutakina imama. Rabbana faqfirana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma'al abrar. Rabbi jalni mukim wa salati wa min zuriyati rabbana wa taqabal du'a. Rabbana aqfirli wali walidiya wa lil mu'minina yawma yakumu nisab. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا عملنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الراحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يا إزكم لا إلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يسيفون السلام والسلام الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين may uh, Allah bless all of you and may Allah give you a, a beautiful جمعة آمين